good morning students uh, we shall start with the next chapter in ethology in this uh, session we'll be doing about pheromones what do you mean by pheromones what are the different types of pheromones and uh, you can see examples in insects and vertebrates which secrete pheromones what are pheromones in the year 1975 novak described them as chemical messengers these pheromones are chemical substances which are released into the external environment it is released by an organism which is called as a releaser and it brings about a change or the message which is released along with the pheromone is picked up by another member of the same species so it is referred to as intra specific or species specific one organism is releasing a pheromone which is a chemical substance which carries a message and this will affect another organism when you say it affects another organism it brings about change either in the behavior of the second one or in the process of development or in the process of reproduction so one is releasing the chemical substance pheromone which brings about change in the other organism in its behavior or development or reproduction so when we say the pheromone is giving out some message what message is that uh, chemical giving or passing on to another member it provides information like the sex of the organism which is releasing the pheromone whether it's a male or a female or it can also uh, give information about the reproductive status of the individual whether it is reproductively mature or not now all of you know about hormones hormones are also called as chemical messengers but hormones are released inside the body and it brings about some change within the same organism so the hormone released in one part of the body is carried to another part which is called as the target organ and this organ will bring about some physiological changes like release of a uh, enzyme or release of a digestive juice or anything it brings about change in the physiological responses of the same organism so hormones are chemical messengers which are bringing about change in the organism in which it is released whereas pheromones are released into the external environment and in bricks and it brings about change in another organism so the pheromones are released by exocrine glands they have duct so along with the duct the secretions will be released in the year 1959 carlson and lucia described about the pheromones the term pheromone is derived from two greek words ferin meaning carry and harmon meaning to excite so pheromones are hormone like substances secreted by exocrine glands released into the external environment so it is called as ecto hormones at as it is released outside it's called as ecto hormones they will act like chemical messengers they carry signals and these signals in turn brings about responses in the members of the same species so you call this resp response as intra specific communication wherein the release is trying to communicate some information with the receiver so the one which is releasing the pheromone is the releaser and the one in which it brings about change is the receiver 
So there is a communication between the releaser and the receiver which we call it as intraspecific communication. There are different types of chemicals which act as signals. So let us say there is a chemical which is bringing about um, a communication between two different species. So earlier we spoke about the chemicals which is bringing about change within the same species that is intraspecific or conspecific. Here we are talking about chemicals which are bringing about changes or responses in two different species then it is called as interspecific. So there are certain chemicals which are capable of bringing about changes between two different species. So the first type of such a chemical is called as alamone. In this type the there is a organism which is emitting. So the emitter which is releasing the pheromone is benefited. So the pheromone is favoring the emitter. So let us say there is an organism. It has got threat of being eaten by the insect. It releases the alamone. This alamone will act as a repellent of the insect. So it is protected by being eaten up by the insect. So it is between two different species and it is called as alamone. The second type of chemical is called as chiromone. Here it favors the receiver. An organism is secreting the pheromone which is received by another one and the receiver will actually get benefited. For example, if you look at a parasite, parasite cannot survive on its own it needs a host. It is always in search of host. Now this parasite can recognize some chemicals secreted by the host which will attract the parasite towards the host. So the host is secreting chemicals for some other reason whereas the parasite is getting benefited by identifying that chemical and it gets attracted and it gets attached to the host. Such chemicals are called as chiromones. So now there are different types of pheromones, basically there are three types. The first type is called as releaser or signaling pheromone. So this pheromone is released by one organism. It follows a pathway which involves central nervous system or you can say it as neurohumoral pathway. So the pheromone is picked up by the sensory cells, it is taken to the central nervous system then it reaches the blood, it follows the neurohumoral pathway and an organism will release a pheromone which will act as a signaling chemical and this signaling chemical will be perceived by another organism and the other one will know information about the first one which is the releaser. The first one is releasing the pheromone which is carrying some signal which is perceived by the receiver. So the first one when it is releasing the pheromone it gives information about itself like the sex of the individual whether it is male or female, the species, the sexual status whether it is reproductively active or whether it is taking care of the young one. So this type of pheromone is called as releaser pheromone or signaling pheromone which is released by a releaser picked up by a receiver it is picked up by the sensory cells then it follows neurohumoral pathway and brings about responses in the receiver aggressive behavior which is seen in female suppose a female has given birth to young ones and a male approaches this female or a, ma a different male which is not its mate approaches this female she shows aggressive behavior. She releases a pheromone called a sex pheromone which will try to uh, rip, uh, chase away the male which is not familiar to the female which tries to come near this female or encounter this female. 
This is called as aggressive behavior and it releases the pheromone sex pheromone. Another classical example what um, you see in uh, the animal world is the alarm pheromones which are secreted by some uh, insects. Alarm pheromones are those chemicals which are responsible to raise an alarm when there is threat to the colony. It is seen especially in those insects which have got social life where they live in colonies. To name a few colonial social insects, we have ants, honeybees and wasps. All of you know that if you try to disturb a honeybee colony, then one of them will come and sting you and when they sting, they release alarm pher pheromone. This alarm pheromone will be picked up by other members of the colony and they all try to attack you. How did they get the information that there is threat to the colony? When the first one bites you, it is releasing alarm pheromone which attracts other members of the colony and their main goal is to protect the colony and chase the predator away. So this is again another example for releasing or signaling pheromone which is exhibited by the colonial social insects. The second type of pheromone is called as primer pheromone. Unlike the first one, the second, the first one releaser pheromone, the second one is the primer pheromone, this one will bring about long term effect in the receiver. It acts on the endocrine glands and brings about physiological responses in the body. Let us see an example. If you look at the rat reproductive cycle, they show estrus cycle like what is there in the human species menstrual cycle. The estrus cycle in the rats, suppose there is a cage in which only female cycles are there and these uh, females will be releasing certain pheromones. Because of the effect of the pheromones, the estrus cycles become irregular. Now, if you introduce a male male releases some pheromones and these pheromones will act on the reproductive organs of the female and it regularizes the reproductive cycle of the female and it normalizes the cycle. So the female reproductive cycle becomes normal and it is ready to mate the male. So in this case the pheromones released by the male is acting on the reprodu reproductive glands of the female and it is regularizing the estrus cycle of the female so that they are ready to mate. So the pheromone is bringing about a long term change on the endocrine glands bringing about physiological responses. So this is one example for primer pheromone. There was another experiment conducted by a scientist Bruce which is called as Bruce effect. In this experiment when a female rat which is pregnant which is being kept in a cage. Now you remove the male which was responsible to for the pregnancy of this female you remove that male and introduce a new male into the cage. When a new male was introduced into the cage then what happened to this female? She induced abortion and she aborted the developing pups. So after abortion she was ready to mate the new male. This was studied by Bruce and is called as Bruce effect. Why did the female do so? The female induced abortion of her own pups because if she had waited for the completion of the gestation period and if she had reproduced then the new male who did not father these pups would have eaten off the pups so that he can mate the female and produce offsprings of his own. 
So, the female knew this behavior of the male and hence she induced abortion. Anyway, it is these pups will be killed by the new male. So, she induced abortion and she became ready to mate with the new male so that the progeny will survive. This is another example for primer pheromone. If you look at honey bee, honey bee it leads a colonial life. In the colony, uh, there is a single uh, reproductively active female called as the queen. This queen, when she is there, she will not allow other females to become the queen. She suppresses the development of reproductive organs of other females by producing queen substance. This is a pheromone which is released by the queen bee called as queen substance which suppresses the development of the reproductive organs of other female members of the colony. Similarly, there is also social pheromone released by the termites. So, these things we will be doing in detail when we look, do social life in the next chapter. The third type of pheromones is called as imprinting pheromones. So, this is very important like uh, what we studied in the previous chapter, imprinting is a critical state where the mother will bind with the offsprings when they are born because the offsprings need to be taken care of, they have to be fed and protected until they become independent. So, for this to happen, they have to bind with the mother which is called as the filial imprinting and if you look at mice and rats. When the young ones are given birth to, the young ones are in a very immature state. They will not have the development of fur, the skin will be naked, the eyes will be closed and how these immature pups will recognize the mother is by the identification of the pheromone secreted by the mother. Mother releases the pheromone and when the pups will lick on the secretions of the mother, they bind with her. These pheromones are called as imprinting pheromones. So, these are the three types of pheromones what you come across in different animals. Apart from this, the pheromones are also classified as volatile and non-volatile pheromones. This is based on the molecular weight of the chemical substance. If the molecular weight is low, then you call it as volatile pheromone and this is responsible for short time effect like signaling when there is a, a danger the, it has to produce an alarm which is a short time it is required for a short time. So, this is a short time short time effect pheromone or suppose some uh, insect has to attract the opposite sex then it will release the pheromone for attracting the opposite sex. So, these uh, short term effect pheromones are having low molecular weight and they are called volatile pheromones. The second type is non volatile where you have the chemical substance.